Hi, I'm Bernadette Fedoro, and I'm looking forward to you joining us in the Presentation Skills Training Program that will be occurring quite soon. I have a couple of assignments for you, if you're game, and these will help you to be better prepared during our two-day training program. As we start, I'd like to ask you to begin observing events you attend both personally and professionally. Whether these are staff meetings, board or civic organizational meetings, school meetings, social networking, or church group meetings, you get the idea? What I'd like for you to do is to begin by observing the body language of the presenter at these meetings. Whether it's your boss or a member of your board of directors, your church minister or a city council person. Pay special attention to determine if the presenter appears to be prepared when they arrive to the meeting. Does he or she look confident and ready? Or is he shuffling through notes and fumbling through files? Is the presenter's focus on the audience, or does her focus seem to be somewhere else? Imagine what the message would be if you could turn off the sound of their voice. From this moment on, begin to become more aware of the presenter's body language every chance you get. Let's take a look at body language that should be avoided when publicly speaking. The first illustration is what I call the head bower. This is the person who appears to be speaking to the floor, or up at the ceiling, or at a wall. You know they're not engaged with you. The next illustration is the note holder. It is always interesting to watch a note holder because you will notice that the note holder never looks at his or her notes. They just hold on to their notes and the notes become a security blanket for the presenter. Our next illustration is of a hand wringer. On occasion, a presenter will wring his hands throughout the presentation, and this wringing becomes a distraction. It conveys nervous energy. The hand holder is the presenter who simply holds her hand throughout the presentation. Once in a while, the hand holder may switch so that the opposite hand is on top. The hand holder and the wrist holder don't allow their hands to freely gesture. Gesturing is an important way to help convey your message and make your presentation more interesting. Our next example is of the one-handed pocketer. This presenter keeps his hands safely tucked inside one of his pockets. The two-handed pocketer is even more shy, and by keeping both hands safely pocketed, the presenter says to the audience, I'm staying in control and withholding as much as I can. This presenter comes across as reserved. Next, we have what I call the Frankensteiner. This presenter holds his or her hands stiffly to their side, not allowing them to engage in the conversation. And you see, we miss those hands because they draw us in to the conversation. This illustration shows a presenter whose body language is saying, I'm in charge. His hands on his hips can be interpreted as somewhat aggressive. The last thing we want to do is alienate the audience by coming across as a bully. Coming up, we have three examples of presenters with crossed arms. In the first example, we have someone with crossed arms looking very stern. In the second example, we have presenters looking positive and forthright. And they look genuinely interested, but their crossed arms depict a message that says, I'm protecting myself from you, the audience. The crossed arms serve as a barrier. 
Watch for presenters who have open arms and hands, who look directly into the audience. These are confident presenters who are sincerely welcoming and inviting you to fully participate in their presentation. This concludes part one of our pre-program presentation. Now in part two, we'd like for you to become cognizant of the audience's body language when you are attending meetings. Let's take a look at our first picture here. And you tell me whether you think this person is bored and tired, excited and enthusiastic, or thoughtful and evaluating. If you chose C, thoughtful and evaluating, you are correct. Anytime a person has their hand over their mouth with the one finger pointing up, it means that they are evaluating what you are saying. So this is a good clue for you to watch out for. Let's take a look at the next person. Your choices are, is this woman angry and distraught? Is she interested and intrigued? Or does she appear to you to be C, helpless and discouraged? If you chose letter B, you are correct. Interested and intrigued. In this example, our woman is interested. You see her eyes are connected to the speaker. She is intrigued and evaluating the situation. The pen is simply an extension of her body in this example. Number three. In this example, our individual is looking with her hands on her chin. And I've given you a clue in one before that. Is she A, preoccupied yet caring, B, intrigued yet skeptical, or C, grateful yet obliging? If you chose letter B, inquisitive but skeptical, you're correct. And what gives us away is the fact that she's got this look, very serious look in her face, yet a little bit of a smirk on her mouth that shows us she may be just a little skeptical about what we're saying. All right, let's take a look at number four. Number four is A, confused and disoriented, B, irritated and harried, or C, secretive and questioning. If you answered letter C, secretive and questioning, you are correct. The questioning part has to do with the scratching of the head. Anytime people are scratching their head, they're thinking about what it is you're saying. It's not only how they scratch, but what else is going on with their facial expressions. The reason that I add the secretive component to this is because you see he is withholding. His jacket is pulled tightly together and he's withholding a part of him as he's scratching his head. Now let's look at number five. Number five, your choices are, is this person A, lost and confused, B, cheerful and upbeat, or C, goofy and mischievous. Make your choice now. If you answered lost and confused, you're correct. Anytime someone puts their hands out like this, it is an extension of help. I don't know what's going on here. Now we have to take a look at the facial expressions and the context of the situation. You might have chosen letter C, goofy and mischievous. And that might be correct in a situation where you have a clown that's goofing around in the office. Now let's move on to number six and see if you can figure this one out. Does this person look to you to be A, thoughtful and contemplative, B, discouraged and analytical, or C, logical and brooding? Make your choice. If you chose C, logical and brooding, you are correct. Anytime that a person is touching their head again, it means that they're thinking. And because this person has not necessarily a discouraged look on his face, but somewhat of a brooding look on his face, 
It could be discouraged and analytical, but I thought logical seemed to be the best answer. If you said discouraged and analytical, that might be a correct answer as well. All right, let's take a look at number seven and tell me what you think about this particular audience member. Does he appear to be A, meditative and thoughtful, B, shut down and annoyed, or C, interested and contemplative? If you chose B, you're correct. Because anytime someone has their arms crossed, it usually means in a presentation that this person is not particularly receptive to the information you're sharing. So you may want to do something to break the barriers. Again, to get the information flowing both ways. All right, let's take a look at number eight. Is this woman overwhelmed, overjoyed, or overindulged? Make your choice. If you chose letter A, overwhelmed, you are correct. How do we know that? We can tell because she has her hands over her ears, which means, stop, I can't take any more. Anytime a participant begins to put both hands over their head, it means they're on system overload. Let's take a look at number nine. In this example, is this gentleman saying, A, stop, I don't buy it, B, what else do you have to offer, or C, let's go get a cup of coffee? If you chose A, you're correct. Stop, I don't buy it. The skills that you will be learning will help you in large meetings, whether they're conventions or conferences, or small meetings, your board of directors or your staff meetings. You're going to be learning tangible techniques for engaging your audience regardless of the size. My goal for you is that you experience success every time you get up to speak. I'm Bernadette Fedoro. I'm looking forward to working with you soon. And thank you for tuning in today.